Hi, this is Tom, W8JI. I'm going to show some information here on the AL811H amplifier. Uh, I collect data on these amplifiers as I service them when I'm testing the amplifiers. And uh, they all have about the same efficiency curve. Um, the efficiency is highest at high drive levels, and then the dissipation in the tube actually goes up. The dissipation increases as you turn the drive power down from the tuning condition goes through a little peak and then the uh, and then the uh, dissipation in the anodes falls back off I want to uh, make one point perfectly clear about uh, the life of the 811 tubes we need to understand that we can't assign a certain drive power to the 811 tube or the any of the amplifiers and say if you drive it with this amount of power versus this much the tube life is going to increase. That isn't what, eat the, what eats these tubes up. The damage to the tubes is melding of the anode. That's caused by the plate dissipation of the tube. That's the DC input power minus the RF output power is approximately the dissipation that the anodes have to get rid of as heat. So that's what you have to watch out for. Now this heating in the anode is not instantaneous. Like anything that we heat, it has some thermal lag. So it takes, a, it takes heat over time. While the, while the uh, steady running dissipation is around 60 or 65 watts, that's the average dissipation in the anode over like 20 or 30 second time periods. So we can have quite a bit more dissipation if it's for a shorter time period, but if we want maximum life, we need to keep that dissipation below 60 or 65 watts over time. This is way more important than grid current or anything else that you do with a tube. Okay, this is a uh, AL811H, and the transmitter is running on 40 meters and it's putting out about 96 watts uh, PEP with a tuning pulser. So I'm going to uh, show you how to tune this. I'm just going to kick this thing right on with uh, 97 watts. Let me get the controls a little bit messed up here. There we go. And now 40 meters, turn it on, and then I'll rotate the plate control until the grid current peaks. See it kicked the, this has a TOF in it, so it kicked the uh, amplifier off when the grid current got too high. So I'll reset that. I need more loading control. Turn it back on. Back on to peak again. It's lighting the meters a little bit red. Um, it's pulsing red. So I'll tune it right here to the pulse goes away and on the on the um, AL811H it's 1150 watts that means this thing's got real good tubes in it it's 1150 watts the high voltage is 1600 volts it's on a 120 volt circuit here so uh, about 170 milliamps so I set it right below the red let's see what happens if I get this here so it's flashing red. The output's down just slightly and if I go the other way and load it too heavy to bring the grid current down the output isn't dropping too much, a little bit but I'll guarantee you the efficiency's um, falling apart doing this. So what we want to do for maximum efficiency and um, good linearity in the amplifier is to get right up here around 160 to 180 milliamps right when the uh, when the meters just start to pulse red so that's all there is to tuning this thing up we can go to a different band and uh, let me put it on there's um, 20 meters still with the tuning pulser 94 watts output on the exciter. Put this on 20. I'll kick this on. 
I'll peek this up see not much grid current so I I turn the loading control counterclockwise bring the grid current up to about 170 180 mils in there if I go beyond that it blinks a little bit red at me so I'll, I'll set it around 170 mils this is that full drive 1150 watts PEP output again on the bird meter that's how simple it is to tune